everyone so on my channel i already have a um tutorial for the harping wheel on the template so what i thought i would do for you is i thought super quickly i would show you how to make um the freehand versions because obviously not all of you have got the templates and some of you do prefer the three hand, hand methods so i thought if i show you both you've got options that you can sort of play around with and uh, work on yourself depending on which way you, you actually works for you so like so this is a freehand version and this is in 1.5 inch ribbon and we will need um sorry 38 centimeters of ribbon and i've already got that cut here and a corresponding piece of nine mil for a pinner center and i use these two little guide clips here so it's actually much simpler than it looks because all you need to do is take your piece and we make this shape. You see? Like so. So you start long and then you bring those over like so. So you've got reasonably similar amounts, these ends. Now, don't be overly concerned about how long these are when you're first practicing. Um, it's only when you're getting into deep precision that you can start measuring. But, excuse my hair, I'm melting at the moment. So that's roughly an inch, and that's roughly an inch. But the trick is to get it balanced properly on all your bows. Just put a clip here and a clip there, like so. And what you do is take this corner and this corner, bring them dead centre, and if you've done it properly, as you can see, those line up like this and then you can hold that in half and to make sure you're putting your crease your stitches in the exact right place what you do is you crease the center by adding a little bit of heat and pinching so you've got that nice clear line and that's what we use as a guide for our stitches and then obviously i've got my double thread which is extra strength Gutman thread and a long darning needle you'll always notice that all my needles are longer in my tutorials just helps you get your stitches more even and what you want to do is we start from above one two to make that a bit more even eight across I won't count, like I said, I always mess up when I count aloud when I'm talking to you all, so I'll show you once it's through. So, as you can see, in, one, over, one, out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You can also do it with six, depending on what you prefer, what works for you. And the back, you'll have one, two, three, four. Okay, but if you start in, you must always come out, and that's a key thing, evenness and in and out all the time. Okay, so leave your clips on, there we go. and then squeeze it down. And obviously, as you can see, the eight stitches are giving me the four creases. And then you can wrap, like I said, keep using that crease guide that we put in round, and that'll help your bow stay nice and balanced. Wrap round a couple of times, and then stitch off in the back, however you personally prefer. Do that excess, 
and then we can take our clips off and obviously I always do my tails a little bit longer but like I said you could literally take them cut them straight against the corner of your main bits of the bow you could cut them down and add your spikes in you can curve them you can play around like I said in every different shape that you cut into your tails you get a completely different look to your bow so like I said it's quite versatile as well um, as we all know I'm partial to a slight curve but like I said if you want to like I said be free feel, feel free like I said we know that's an inch difference from there so like I said if you wanted to you could do half an inch cut it down and then shape your tail from there like I said, it's all personal preferences. So like I said, you play and do what you want to do with your tails. But like I said, I'm going to do a gentle curve to match my other one. Like so. And don't forget to heat seal. When you're heat sealing, you can see my lighter, you've got that orange bit of the flame and the blue bit of the flame or the clear bit of the flame. When you're heat sealing, you always want to stay in that blue bit. If you go into the orange, you'll get like smoke marks or like overly melt your edges because it's too hot for the ribbon. So like I said, you want to stay in that blue bit there. Okay, that's a bit that heat seals without damaging your ribbon or causing any extra problems for you. And then like I said, I've got my little piece of nine mil and a bubble. I'm going to put tiny bit of glue just there not too much and I always put my seamless bubble I always put the seam directly on that dot of glue just for an extra bit of strength and I've heat sealed the end of my nine mil like so use that excess little bit of glue that we've got either side there hold that on and then I always wrap round nice and tight at least twice like so heat seal that end again and then just a touch of glue just there and then like I said you've got two Matching pinwheels, half pinwheels, like so. Like I said, you can do your tails longer, shorter, spikes, etc. Play around, make the bow yours. Um, I've worked out the measurements for all the different widths, so I'll put them all below. And if you want to join me over on your play, my page, if you're struggling with like stitch placements and things like that, I've been doing little visual guides to show you where to put the, the, the stitches in on all the different sizes. Um, so they're really easy to see and really clear if you miss anything on the video. And like I said, if you need the measurements, they're always in the description below because sometimes I talk a little bit fast and I'm, a, I'm quite aware of that at times. So like I said, I've put them down for there for you along with the page and group link. link. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And hopefully you found this shit super useful. Thank you. Bye.